but we are still having a 98% of probabilities of not impacting. So uh, I'd say that the people should not be very much worried. The, again, as I said, probably at that time, uh, this is a warning for us as, as scientists and researchers uh, that we should put uh, a lot of attention on this subject in order to gather as many observations as possible in order to um, ascertain the trajectory of the subject with, with the highest accuracy possible. And lift off. Decollage liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage. Fantastic pictures of this telescope. Go Webb, go Webb. Yes, go Webb. We succeeded uh, as an international team of, of uh, researchers, both at NASA and ESA and other organizations, to, uh, to uh, request. Uh, observation time in the James Webb Space Telescope and actually uh, got it. So uh, we will be able to observe uh, the wire 4 in mid-March and, and in May, not only to improve the knowledge on the trajectory of this object, but most importantly in order to determine also the size of the object because asteroids are uh, difficult, the, the size of the asteroids is very difficult to determine only through visual observations from telescopes. But if we use infrared measurements from infrared telescopes, this allows to constrain much more the size of the object. And, and here, the James Webb will, will really help in, in uh, let's say, constraining uh, a lot the, the size range of the object. Uh, 2024 YR4 is an asteroid that was discovered uh, on the 27th of December uh, of the last year, and uh, along the month of January of, of this of the present year, uh, we've been collecting uh, uh, many more observations that have allowed us to constrain the orbit of this object. And as we were gathering all those observations, we quickly saw that the, the uh, chances of this object impacting the Earth. Uh, on the 22nd of December uh, 2032 were rising little by little to the point that by um, the, uh, the 27th of, of, uh, of uh, January the, the uh, impact probabilities for this object rose above uh, a, a threshold that we have uh, that we have agreed internationally which is the 1% impact probability um, which is a threshold that uh, let's say, tells us that we have to put a special care, uh, more care to, uh, on this object. So we have to request observations from more, more uh, from other telescopes, actually request the time, uh, in this case, uh, for example, for James Webb on space telescopes, in order to ascertain with the highest uh, possible accuracy what is the situation with regards to this object uh, in, uh, and, also, and with regards to the possibilities of impacting the Earth. In the meantime, since the end of January, the priority has been increasing even more to the point 
where we are now, where, where, where we have a 2% uh, uh, impact probability. And um, this, this is so because when we are uh, obtaining more, more measurements, we're able to constrain uh, much more the, the trajectory of the, of the asteroid. And this means that the uncertainty that we have at the moment of impact is smaller and smaller. And if the Earth is still within the impact path of this object, this means that the Earth occupies a larger extent of the uncertainty region, which means that the impact probabilities rise. And this is what we have been observing, that little by little, by little the impact probabilities uh, have been rising. So what we are expecting is that uh, by uh, April or, or the latest May, with the observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, uh, we have uh, roughly a 90% probability of removing this object from the impact risk. So this is good news because uh, nine of ten cases in, in nine of ten cases we will be able to to remove this object from the risk list. However, this is still a 10% probability that this object will remain in the risk list after uh, after May, uh, in which case we would only be able to see it again in uh, in the spring of 2028, and uh, only then we would know whether it would be an impact trajectory or not. With the Earth. But today, what we can say is that uh, we, we, we have 98% uh, probabilities of the object not impacting the Earth in 2032. Liftoff of the Falcon 9 and DART on NASA's first planetary defense test to intentionally crash into an asteroid. Just heard the call out for spacecraft separation. You can see the video of the DART spacecraft on its way, heading on its way to the Didymo system. What a spectacular view of DART. Yep. Uh, just floating away from the Falcon 9 second stage. And you can see the sun off to the side there as Dart drifts away from the Falcon 9 second state. Of, uh, if, we, if we speak of, uh, of a Tunguska case, uh, event case, in the case it was around 50 meters, if it was 90 meters, we we would be easily speaking of 10 times the, the, the effect of the event back in 1908. 